All right, uh, this is video lecture number four. I am at Roman numeral three, letter F. Okay. Now, I just finished talking about Martin Luther and his thoughts on the topic of indulgences, especially the selling of indulgences. Okay. Well, I just defined what an indulgence was and in selling of indulgences, I should say. Now, I'm going to get into what Martin Luther had to say about it. Okay. Now, um, so, let's go to um, letter F under Roman numeral three. All right. Uh, letter F is the 95 Thesis. Now, so Martin Luther, he especially hated this idea of selling indulgences. He thought that that was absolutely unchristian for the church to accept people's payment for forgiveness of sins before they ever committed a sin. Okay, It's like saying, okay, go ahead and commit your sin now that you've paid for it. All right. Totally not cool to him, totally anti-Christian, totally goes against what he um, read in the Bible. Okay. So, Martin Luther took this problem. This was a, the biggest problem that he had with the Catholic Church. And he started making this big list of all the problems that he had with the way the Catholic Church was running. Okay? Now, keep in mind, Martin Luther believes that Christianity is the true faith. You know, he believes that, that the only true religion is Christianity. However, he believed that the Catholic Church, by around the year 1500, had become very abusive of the way that they ruled over people as the as the only avenue to Christianity, okay? So Martin Luther made this list of all the problems they had with the Catholic Church. Selling indulgences was number one. But he totaled about 95 things, 95 big issues that he had with the Catholic Church, okay? Now, Martin Luther being the very outspoken person that he was, he's not one to keep things a secret. He's not one thing to keep things to himself. He took his list of 95 problems, and on this date, on October 31st, in the year 1517, October 31st, 1517, that's an important date, make sure you remember that. October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther took his list to the church where he lived in Wittenberg, Germany, and he nailed this list to the church house door. Alright, well now that, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? But it's not as bad... Maybe you don't quite get it. Have you ever seen, let me ask you this, in the contemporary world, something you may understand. Have you ever seen a billboard um, somewhere as you're driving down the road, and on that billboard you see pictures of people who have committed crimes? In particular, you see these, these uh, billboards with pictures of people who have committed sex crimes. Their picture and the, the crime they committed is posted there for everybody to see in town. So if that person lives in that town and you drive by, you see that billboard, you say, hey, I know that dude. I went to junior high school with that dude. Well, now you know that person has committed a crime that is really bad, and, and he's shamed publicly. What Martin Luther does by nailing this to the church house door is he shames the Catholic Church publicly. He says the Catholic Church is wrong, the people who run the Catholic Church are wrong, and here are 95 reasons why I say they're wrong. Okay, This is a very public place. This is some place... The, the church is some place that, that people went by every day. It's like the bulletin board. You know, it's where everybody in town goes. The churches were always at the center of the town. And there was kind of a marketplace where people would buy their groceries and things like that. Right out in front of the Catholic church in the village square. The town square, if you will. Um, and so everybody sees this. And people are shocked. Because Martin Luther has posted the, this list of indictments against the church right there in front of everybody to see. Once again, remember, he's not shy. He's not afraid to tell you what he thinks. All right, so he does this. And as you might guess, this is going to get him into a lot of trouble. Remember that date, October 31st, Halloween, in the year 1517. And by the way, Halloween did exist at that time. All right, so the result, letter G, is excommunication. What the Catholic Church does in response to Martin Luther's actions is they excommunicated him. That means they kicked him out of the church. He's no longer welcome in the Catholic Church. He can no longer receive the sacraments of the Catholic Church. He's no longer seen as part of the Catholic Church. What that means to the minds of those folks at that time was that he would go to hell for all eternity. No other way to heaven except for the Catholic Church at that time for those folks. That's what they believed anyway. Now, all of a sudden, this guy, this very important person, this very intelligent person, this leader, former leader anyway, in the Catholic Church, has been condemned to hell by the church. Now, that is a serious crime. 
that is, I mean, that is a serious punishment. Now, the Catholic Church, if they kick you out, they can't accept you back in. They can let you back in if they choose to do so. It's, it's a big threat. And people were excommunicated all the time. Entire countries have been excommunicated. Okay? But it's really kind of a political ploy by the church usually to get people back in line with the church's way of thinking. So what the church wants Martin Luther to do is to back down off of what he said, apologize, you know, get back in line with what the church said, and they'll let him back in. Well, guess what Martin Luther um, says? Not Martin Luther King. I almost said Martin Luther King. That's a whole different hero, okay? So this is a different guy. What Martin Luther said about the excommunication was, I do not care. You guys do not control my salvation. I understand salvation. I understand going to heaven. I understand being close to God in a whole different way. I know this because I've read the Bible. Something to that effect is kind of Martin Luther's stance on it. He said, I don't care if you excommunicate me or not. So he's kicked out of the church and he doesn't care. Okay. Uh, letter H. What the church wants him to do, like I said, is to recant. That means to take back what he said. Okay, to say that that was all lies. He just made all that stuff up, and and he's very very sorry, and and hopes that he can get back into the good graces of the church. So what they do is they bring Martin Luther into court in the year 1521, and the the court that that the the court case in which Martin Luther is put on trial before the Catholic Church is called the um, the um, <laughs> the Council of Worms. It's spelled Worms, W-R-O-R-M-S, excuse me. It's not the Council of Worms. It's the Diet of Worms, which means council. Diet, not like the food you eat. Diet as in a, a court case, okay? Different language. Anyway, so he's brought to the Diet of Worms to plead his case. Sounds a little gross, doesn't it? Diet of Worms, Diet of Worms. Ooh. Anyway, so he's brought to the Diet of Worms to plead his case, Okay. They want him to recant because he's caused quite a stir. A lot of people are saying, you know, Martin Luther has a point. He's caused some chaos among the Catholics. And they want him to back down off of what he said. Guess what Martin Luther said? No way. I'm not backing down. In fact, he called the Pope the Antichrist. Whew. That's serious. Okay. Martin Luther is hardcore against what the Catholic Church is teaching folks. They're going to have him executed. That's their plan. If they can't get him to back down, they're going to torture him to death. Just like the Spanish Inquisition, as I talked about in Unit 1. Okay. Well, somehow Martin Luther escaped from the Diet of Worms and goes into hiding for the next couple of years. And while in hiding, what he did was he took the Bible and he translated it into the German language. Okay. And made it public to everybody. Now, here's another point on that. The Bible at the time was only written in Latin. Okay. You could not, it was illegal to have a Bible in any other language. The, the, the Latin language was the language of the Catholic Church. It was the ancient Roman language. Okay? There were no English Bibles, no French Bibles, no Spanish Bibles, no German Bibles. Not until Martin Luther came along anyway. Only Latin Bibles. Okay? Because it was seen as you know, the, the holy language. Of course, the Bible was originally not even written in Latin. It was originally written in Hebrew and Greek. Okay? But Latin was all you could have. Well, Martin Luther goes out and he translates the Bible into the German language, and now people all over are reading the Bible. He's a real revolutionary. He's really bringing huge changes. Okay, so anyway, back to letter H. He, they want him to recant. He refuses, and he escapes. Okay, and in that time, that's when he translates the Bible. All right, letter I under Roman numeral three. What happens as a result of Martin Luther's action uh, is that. Um, people throughout the region of Germany. By the way, Germany was not a country at the time, but it was definitely a region. There were definitely German people, but not a German government or a German border. There were several what we call German kingdoms, smaller kingdoms that later became the country of Germany. Okay? What happens is that state churches, that means c churches of each of these kingdoms, were established after Martin Luther's actions. Okay? So each little kingdom has its own church. It rejects the Catholic Church. And it, and it forms. Now remember, this is just in Germany, one of the countries of Europe today. And they form these new churches. And guess what they call all these new churches? These are all the Lutheran churches. And the Lutheran churches still exist today. All right, that's all for Roman numeral three. I'll pick up with Roman numeral four on the next video.